where shall I begin? I guess, you know, did you see the Mark Zuckerberg headline where basically he recently came out and said that the Biden administration influenced Facebook to throttle information that then Facebook later found out was true? I think what I read was that Zuckerberg came out and said that the Biden administration asked him to throttle information and nothing about that was true or not true, just that there was. But that, that there was requests to throttle that were obliged. There was requests to throttle that were, yes, obliged. Again, it's not. And, and also apparently a statement that he would not throttle in the future. That, that heretofore thou should be there, there shall be less throttling. Yes, I'll accept that, counselor. Generally. Okay. So you've seen this news item, as it were. Yes, There's I also did. a news item about recent arrest, incarceration of a young fellow responsible for an organization identified as Telegram. Are you familiar with this news item? I am. I am. My buddy Pavel. Okay. I mean, him and I go way back. Yes. Okay. So you know. So so your friend has now been detained. The, the uh, he's the proprietor of uh, Telegram. Telegram is sort of a WhatsApp or an SMS adjacent sort of communications platform, popular amongst some sectors of humanity, providing the ability to send and receive messages and images and all the things that everybody does all the time with each other, as we all know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a fine, upstanding citizen he is, yes. But that I can't say. I, I don't know the man. You, he's your friend, so yes. I, I don't know. Mark Zuckerberg explicitly stated that there is U.S. government pressure to throttle from time yes. to time. Yes. I, then there's a third individual you might have heard of whose name is uh, Elon, who has spoken at great length about throttling and attempts to throttle a social media platform he purchased by the name of Twitter. Yes. Yeah. Who happens? The thing I love about this discussion, just, just to put it in some context around it, you gave me the founder of Telegram, the founder of Facebook, and the owner of Twitter. That's what I've given you. Yeah, I mean, no chance that any one of those three is talking their book either, right? You're suggesting that they might make public comments that have a conflict of interest with, with other private interests that they might hold. I'm suggesting that the owners of those, owners slash founders of those three of the largest social media franchises might have a slightly different take on those social media franchises than the rest of the world. So let's not take everything that they say as the gospel, okay? Because it's not. Fair, okay, we shall quote them. Oh, with one other, one song. other thing I should mention: not only are Please. they the founders Please. and or and or CEOs, owners of those three social media apps, so not only is everything that they say probably you know not the only thing we should be paying attention to, but they are also all three of them are among the. They're all multi-billionaires, and two of the three are among the richest people in the world. So I just want to frame this so that we're clear that you're sitting here about to make the case for the defense about three of the richest people in the world who happen to also be the founders and CEO of this company, and you're going to give me, I'm, I'm just assuming because... This is the lecture I've been getting from Victor Jones all week that I'm going to get a lecture on free speech from these three wonderful, outstanding citizens. But keep going. Your efforts to prejudice the jury. I think they work quite your, well. With think, your preemptive commentary. I think they did quite, I think they did their job. Yeah. Only serves as an insight to the fragility of your of your case that you are left with no alternative but to attempt to preemptively assassinate the character of the witnesses rather than to abide the content of the affair which we haven't even gotten to yet because we're so busy setting the stage that would be fair except that i think that i was actually being quite kind to these three people that on the one hand, you know, you're going to make a passionate de defense about free speech. On the other hand, there's plenty of people that can make a very passionate argument that all three are sociopaths. Two things can be true at the same time. <laughs> yes, they can. I'm just stating a fact, okay? Richest people in the world, owners of the franchises, and probably sociopaths, but go ahead. I can, so, but I like this. So let's go down this path. Let's assume that Pavel, Elon, and Mark are, are three of the most evil humans in the, in the world. Yeah, 
I mean, I don't have to, I don't think they're the most evil humans, but they have a conflict of interest with broader with the broader interests of society and sure. that they have delusions of grandeur. Sure. That they have, you know, various sociopathic sociopathic traits or cluster B personality characteristics. Sure. And all the things. Yeah. Let's also assume that the primary source of information on Earth is platforms that they control or similar platforms that they don't control that provide a similar function. Okay. Google, Amazon, like some sort of these mega platforms, Amazon, not really, but these mega platforms that have replaced Walter Cronkite or, you know, the, the New York Times or whatever, yeah. the arbiters of information. I'm, I'm, I'm accepting that, Counselor. Yes. Of course, of course. How could you not? And let's assume that those platforms frequently distribute information that is sometimes true and sometimes false, sometimes damaging, sometimes beneficial, sometimes to the interests of the government, of particular government, since they're global in nature. So sometimes they're transmitting information is that is to the advantage of a given government. Okay. Sometimes they're, sometimes they're transmitting information that's to the disadvantage of a given government. Do you believe that any government should have the ability to throttle or propel specific swim lanes or verticals of information that they either like or don't like? Of course, yes. Elaborate. I, I'm not so sure that... I, I don't know what you have to elaborate about that. You, you think that... Um... So you, you're saying governments should be able to... So, I mean, I, I guess here's what the, what's perplexing for me. One of the primary criticisms of the America's arch nemesis over the last century, I'm, I'm re referencing Russia and China in this instance, is that they are nations dominated by propaganda as defined by sure. the idea that the government determines what information should or should not be made available not to the that's, people. That's not necessarily the case. Do you believe that America is governed by propaganda? I do. Really? Okay, then we have a problem. Oh, yeah. I don't believe it is. Oh, we do have a problem, for sure we have a problem. <laughs> I don't believe it is. There are certain places... That's because you've been propagandized. No. The, if I talk no. to my friends in Russia and Beijing, they don't think there's propaganda there either. It's, that's, I, that's I, don't, I don't agree with that. If I talk to my friends in Russia and China, they do believe it's propaganda. They just, they learn to live with it, but they believe it's propaganda. But, but, but let's not get into our personal beliefs. I want to, because I want to stay I, I understand. Government. One of the reasons that the U.S. actually works is because we don't govern by or have that level of of propaganda it doesn't but, exist but, but again okay that's not a worthwhile use of our time because it's such a we're so far apart on the topic that it's just gonna it's gonna go nowhere because the, the entire nation is permeated by propaganda at a level that is exceeds russia and china as far as i'm concerned but there's a different issue which is you said if i heard you correctly that you believe the u.s government or any government should have the right and does have the right to throttle or not throttle information on telegram whatsapp Facebook, Twitter, whatever. But we do. Did in, I correctly? In this country, we do. We don't actually give you the right. You don't have the right to say whatever it is that you want to say about anything because there are certain limitations to, there are certain kind of, there are certain fences in this country of what you can and can't say. That's the difference. You can't do so certain things. So give me an example. What is, we, under the first, under the principles of the First Amendment and the right to free speech. Sure. You have the right to free speech as long as, but you don't have the right, you don't have the right to solicit, you know, a 10 year old for sex. You don't have the right to provide terrorists with the ability to, you know, to create bombs. And you don't have the right to, to get people to gather around to. Uncontested. Uncont okay. You don't have to make examples. Right. I'm right. uncontested. So we have, so we do have, we do have mm -hmm. a bunch of. You know, no, no, we don't we have, have some restrictions. Of, we have one. No, no, we have one restriction, which is information that explicitly puts the public at risk. Fine. Okay, that's good. You cannot re scream fire in a crowded theater. That's not free speech. You yeah, cannot right. prey upon children. You okay. cannot. Yeah. So we have this free speech. Right. Free speech, with the exception of information that explicitly endangers the public. Yeah. So here's the, the issue. Yeah. It's a very slippery slope. That's 
That's not the issue. Where that, the government, where because it's one thing, oh, you're preying on 10-year-olds or you're giving out machine guns to old ladies in nursing homes or whatever, like the things are obvious, like it's like pornography, like you obviously know it when you see it. But when the government decides that sharing information that is true about a pandemic or true about a vaccine is a danger to the public, when the government uses the pretext, this is my primary concern, and I'm interested in how you reconcile this. And I, I say this without any, you know, uh, sarcasm or goofing around. I, because we're going to, we're in agreement, right? But my I guess my question will be, what prevents the government from using the logical ability for them to restrict speech insofar as when speech endangers the public, and what, and then the government's yeah. use of the claim that it's a danger to the public to just control information that either sure. Donald Trump is a danger to the public. Well, yeah. so because the That's government decided that, Donald Trump. That is, that is the gray area. That is the thin, thin blue line or whatever you want to call it that we walk all the time in this country. It's also the reason why Zuckerberg is and Musk are not in jail like Pavlo Dur Durov is. You know, they're, they're, that is the reason. That's why he's in detention right now and Musk and Zuckerberg are not. Because we have certain rules here that they, you know, they can't put people in danger. And that's one of the reasons that he was no longer in Russia. That's one of the reasons he's wherever he is in Saudi Arabia, wherever he lives. And one of the reasons he couldn't go back to France. And because civilized society has those kind of protections in place, and that's exactly why Musk isn't behind bars because he hasn't crossed over that line. He understands that line. As crazy as he is, he gets where that line is. As crazy as Zuckerberg is, he gets where that line is. So that's is okay. Is it not obvious, though, that, I mean, I think the COVID pandemic ex makes it very clear. No, because COVID the, is a gray area. The, use the pretext of dan a public danger to, to throttle when, the, in fact, it was in the interest of the pharmaceutical companies to sell to make money. And if, and if, they, and if ivermectin was a known cure, then there would not, or known, known treatment, I shouldn't say cure, but a known intervention, then it would have made it illegal for them to do what they did with the vaccine. And I'm that, not saying that that's true or false, that's, but I'm that's saying that's that, not that, fair. Just, that discussion was not had because that's it was not deemed fair. to be in the public good and it was influenced by the U.S. Why is that not fair? Because you're, you're, you fast forwarded four years and you're looking backwards. And if you go back four years and nobody knew what's going on and there's a half a million or a million people dying around the world and you have to do something, okay? You can't sit with your hands in your pockets and go da 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 this is all bullshit. It's impossible. You had to take action. And you had the smartest people in the world, you know, telling you this is what we should do. Whether they're right or wrong, they did it all with, it was genuine what they did. You can't have a bunch of complete morons out there telling I, you, hey, this is this is stupid. And, and, and you're supposed it. to I, listen to the morons. Forget that. I, I'm not suggesting that, but what I'm suggesting is, I'm, I, don't, I agree with everything you just said. But is that not the time when you want the most discussion? In other words, at the moment where you have so much risk and you don't, and there's at maximum uncertainty, and you don't know what's going to happen. I know, you can't anyway, go back. My, I guess we're not going to solve that, and that's not Yeah, we're not going to solve that, and you back. can't go back but, but four years. Because it has to do with the throttling. My point is that you talk about what you call the thin blue line. You can call it throttle, not throttle. Right, okay. It's obvious. Don't give everybody a nuclear bomb. You yeah. know, don't steal the yeah. children. Like, there's some things, whatever. Yeah. The issue right now at this moment in history, whether it's GDPR privacy protection in the Europe, which is probably the most enforcement around digital life is in Europe, and where a company can go to jail because they gave away Tom's information. You know, there's, a, there's some websites you sure. can't visit when you're in London, whatever. Sure. I guess what I'm getting, it's obvious we're at a moment, whether it's Brazil and Musk, whether it's Telegram going to jail, or whether it's Zuckerberg at least trying to preemptively say, listen, throttling happens. I'm sorry, I'll do what I can to sort of be less throttly, but I don't even know what that means. That we're sort of at a collision course here between the power of information and the social media, the central, the, 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 the monopoly on information platforms or oligopoly on the information platforms is the greatest threat to government power ever. Ooh, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's fair. I, I don't know if that's fair, but the, the, I just don't buy the argument. I can't, I can't actually stand the argument that this is, that this is about free speech because it's, I, it's not like, I, I just don't like that argument. 
I don't like but that. How do, you, how do you feel feeling like when you see something, when you see information, whether it's from a Google search or from a TikTok, Instagram, what, whatever, all the way we all kind of get pinged with notifications, whether we want them or not on our phone, like whatever comes in, however it comes in, whether it's from this one or that one, don't you want to have a sense that that information is has some version of reliability, has some aspect of reliability associated with that and whatever information you're consuming? I mean, for me, I'm just, just to give you like yeah, the uh, thing of that course. Can, the answer is of course, yeah, of course. And don't you feel that knowing that the government throttles or doesn't throttle uh, compromises that? I I don't know. I don't know that that's a fair statement is my point. I don't the government has a responsibility not to throttle information that they you're going back to a time in 2020 when What they, about Hunter Biden's laptop? I mean again these are sort of so politicized. I don't yeah, know, that, I that, that, that's stupid, that's just stupid. That's but that's but, idiotic. But, but, but it was but I'm just saying it was a famously throttled piece I understand, of but you're going back to the pandemic in 2020 and you're saying well, they knew this. They didn't know this. They didn't know it. Nobody and knew it. And when you don't know, right, but when you said so they, because they didn't know, they still took aggressive action to throttle information. Did, because. Did you be throttling information when you don't know? That is the right course of action. If you don't know something, don't say it. Like, don't put information out there that you don't know. You can't, you can't scare the children. You can't put information I know, but, out. But, but can you put a vaccine in people that gives heart attacks to young men when you don't know that the vaccine doesn't give young men heart attacks? But the other side to that is you have a million people dying. You have multiple millions of people dying around the world. You have to, of course, there is going to be some risk in pushing out, in speeding up a vaccine. There, you have no choice. You, but again, let's not do the COVID debate. It's not fair to either one of us. And I don't fine, even I don't even want it. I don't, I don't want to do a COVID but, debate. I'm just saying, I do don't- the, What about Hunter Biden's laptop, throttled? I, I was going back to the point you originally started off with, like this whole Mark Zuckerberg throttling information. Okay, okay, I'm only going back to that because it was a time when it was the right move to say, hey, shut the hell up because we don't know yet. So it wasn't like this was some- grand scheme where they were trying to shut down Zuckerberg and Facebook. This is like, hey, we don't know. So don't say anything. And that's completely reasonable. So forget COVID. Okay. It's generally accepted. So here's some things that, that at least I think are generally accepted. Okay. It's generally accepted that the places that we spend our time on our telephones. So like when I stop my thumb and look at boats or look at you know, whatever. I get more advertising for things, right? Or that our that our phones are observing our where we point our attention and that they're listening to us and that they feed us average. I'm not complaining about it. I'm saying it's okay. generally accepted that the phone is a surveillance tool. You do that you know that to... you don't you're not required to have a phone. You can go off the grid if you'd like. You could have I'm a landline. Complaining. I know, but I you could have a landline. I, I'm I'm not I'm telling you these are facts, okay? The phone is a surveillance device. That you choose to carry. I pay money. Sure. I, I more, not only do I choose it, but I work and generate income so that I can give it to phone companies so that I can surveil myself for them. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's nuts, but that's not my point. It's also generally accepted that the government, whether it's the U.S. government, the Russian government, the Chinese government, routinely interacts with the social media companies and says, take down this post, take down this post, take down this post. Okay. On the on to, whether it's the Russian government saying you better not be putting that on, the Chinese government, Brazilian government doesn't matter. All the governments, but the big okay. governments attract more attention, obviously. Okay. Everybody's comfortable. People have accepted that the phone is a paid surveillance device because okay. they're like, oh, I like I like getting ads that All things right. I Where want. Where are you going with this? Where are you going? I fear we are slowly boiling the frog where there's an increased comfort with information throttling that is not a public risk, surveillance that is not in the self-interest of people, and that we're very quickly moving to a place where both, it's not Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg and Pavel Durov versus the government, actually, even though it appears to be. It's the social media billionaires and the government combined, creating a false reality for the po for global populations, basically, to perpetuating a reality that is in their mutual interest. And I feel like you have no concern about that. And I know that Tony Batista has a concern about that. And I guarantee Victor Jones has a concern about that. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't. The I don't think, I think Ilya Spivak probably could care less about this. Sure, of course. And I think Chris Vecchio right now is not quite sure what to think about all this. But you and Ilya, but you're the you're the you're the brain in front of me at the moment, and I'm genuinely curious why you feel so comfortable as a frog in the pot, allowing yourself to go through this slow boil First of, of all, surveillance a, and throttling. Yeah, that's not how I would classify it. But you made a common argument, an unfair comparison, because okay, I'm sorry, Russia and China and other places like that that do tell you to take down social media posts are very different from what happens in the U.S. And in the U.S., the people that take you tell you to take down a post are the companies themselves, like TikTok. No, no, not, no I'm, not, I'm talking about the government back channel to Twitter, back channel. I'm not talking about Twitter saying to Dylan Radigan, knock it off. I'm talking about the State Department or the Department of Homeland Security yeah. no, no. emailing the head of compliance at Twitter, Facebook saying, you got to take down that thing, whatever the thing is. Right. And, that, and I'm saying that does happen in this country. Mark Zuckerberg said as much. They came out in the Twitter files. There's no question there's a back chain. In this country, what happens is it's Facebook's job and it's Twitter's job, whoever else that operates here. It's their job, which is why Telegram, by the way, doesn't necessarily have a presence in the U.S., why Telegram is mostly Russian and other places like China. That, China, whatever. But it's why they have a, almost a billion users outside of the U.S. It's because in the U.S., we don't tolerate that. And I don't care what Zuckerberg said about his back channels going back to 2000 because he's just, all he's doing is protecting himself against, he's just, he's just, he is, he's trying to get in front of the any litigation that's coming down on him. So he's just setting the stage it's all just a political move by Zuckerberg. The reality is, in this country, we have rules. And when the companies break those rules, then the people that run those companies, they, they run risk. And the reason that Zuckerberg and the reason that Elon Musk are not in jail is because they understand those rules. And no, but I'm push asking a different question. I'm asking a different question, which is that we know that the U.S. government has back channels to the large social media companies and that the U.S. government requests the large social media companies remove certain information. We, we know, based on a few little pieces of, of discussion topics from CEOs of these social media companies that, again are getting out in front of litigation and fines against them. We don't know that from, we, we know from the people we that do have the it. most to lose. We don't actually know that- but They provided the emails. I mean, are you saying that all of the emails when, after Musk bought Twitter were fabricated? I mean, they had no, access not to at all. all the servers. There's all the emails from the government to Twitter saying, take this down, don't do this, don't do this. It's, That's it's, right. There, there are all these emails saying, hey, this is these are the rules. Just understand. We get the same thing on the brokerage side, same thing in finance, same thing in every other aspect. Everything Same is thing regulated. With the exchange with New York Stock Exchange, of course, finance, of course. Base. Hey, hey, these are the rules. Okay, that's fine. But there's a distinction with the rules for a brokerage. These are the rules for margin, or these are the rules for, you know, marketing or whatever it is for a brokerage. You sure. don't okay, know. These are what, the, my point is, we're talking you, about information. We're talking about information. I, which I is understand. A different asset. I understand, but you're you are. I I believe that. There's some confusion here because there's a big difference between telling somebody this is what you can and can't do versus, versus take this down. I, have, I believe there is some confusion because yeah. the evidence would show that the communication is take this down. I, I don't agree. I know that it's like that's like not agreeing like 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 it, like it's like that's like if I told you you know Apple stock is up today. And you look at the price, and the price is higher. I mean, there are like, clearly I don't agree. like no, that you you must agree because the facts are there is undeniable evidence of the government, U.S. government, communicating with the social media companies saying, "Take this down." There is whatever it might be. There's a lot of evidence of the U.S. government telling social media companies what is and isn't acceptable. Yes, but and yes, but there's also evidence of. I, I know, this, but it's a, again, you're. I think you're blurring the lines here because I think that the reason, again, they cross that line, then somebody goes to jail. If they don't cross that line, then it's just, hey, 
or somebody gets fined or whatever it is, if they don't cross that line, it's like, that's how these guys stay out of jail. That's what happened in the case of Telegraph. They crossed the line. Telegram. Telegram. They crossed the line and they refused to listen. They got their but warnings. But this is my curiosity. I understand all that, but this is my curiosity. And I say this with utmost patience, respect, <laughs> and an open mind and an open heart. It is a fact that the U.S. government communicates with the social media companies, not just what the rules are, but also that they would like those social media companies to specifically remove specific pieces of information. I think if they're a danger to our, if they're a danger, if they're a danger, sure, that's totally fair. The examples that have been surfaced are not child trafficking, weapons dealing, cocaine kingpin infrastructure. It is vaccine information. Granted, I, we don't want to go into that pile of hornet. Sure. That, I, I, that's a special situation. So I'll even put that with, I'll accept that the vaccine is more like weapons and cocaine than anything else. It's a, a unique and individual situation. Not sure. the vaccine, the, the, the uh, pandemic. But there are examples of political information that has been explicit requests to remove. And that is concerning for me, not because I have a political opinion one way or the other. I'm quite offended by both political parties and famously so. So it's not that I have a care that, I, that they're, oh, they're throttling this side or that side. But I do actually, I genuinely have a concern that that is happening. And I have a genuine concern that that's happening in a way that other people believe it's happening, probably more than it is. And I think that it's also, I agree with you, that it's in the sociopathic billionaire CEO's interest to make it appear that they're vulnerable because then they can play yeah. the victim, which is ridiculous. I, 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 so, so I'm not, there's a bunch of, in, so there's, there's a kernel I, of my point. I, is this, I, there's, I hear you. There's a kernel of truth that then gets amplified by, you know, media interests, political, they're like, oh, they, the Fox or the MSNBC are like, they did this horrible thing, whatever. And you're like, oh my God, they did this thing. And then you have these CEOs and founders saying, look at this, you know, and that, that to me, the, the collective reality of that then leads to the, a compromising of the trust and integrity of of information in general, which is a real risk to civil society, in my opinion. And I, I guess I'm, I'm perplexed as to why you're not more alarmed. I will tell you why, because I believe they played you. You've been played. It's not just you. There's a lot of people like you that have been played. This is, it is 2024. You are replaying to me a 2020 you're 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 taking a 2020 not true. this this whole anybody that uses the vaccine or I'm not using the vaccine. Yeah, that's the only example you have. No, that's it's not. It. They just took the telegram guy off the playing field because they, he's trafficking information people don't like. That's Brazil. That's, hold took, on. Just, Brazil, that's, Brazil just took Twitter off the playing field because, because they don't like they, stop. That's not why. They took the telegram guy off the playing field because he wouldn't play ball. Okay? He, he wouldn't play. He didn't listen to them on anything. It wasn't just drug trafficking. It wasn't just, it wasn't, there were so many areas of criminality, they couldn't turn the other way. With Elon in Brazil, he wouldn't, there was like seven accounts at question. He wouldn't deal with those. These are specific points. They, everybody tries to generalize this. These okay. are specific instances. My, Can I, in, I, I, right, go ahead. in the U.S., in the U.S., I do not like accept or buy into for one second anybody that brings up the vaccine or the COVID argument because what happened in 2020 was a I was agree an isolated the, binary event that had so to be addressed all evidence and the, of throttling but the only argument is, is vaccine related the only argument that all of these free speech that. people have the only argument is oh what about the vaccine that's it there's that's something not else true. no no they, oh my god you know what else they have what Oh, yeah, Hunter Biden's laptop. I don't even know what Hunter Biden's laptop. Who the hell's yeah. Hunter Biden? Of course you don't. Of course you Who don't. Who cares? Because it was throttled. Who because cares? Because it was throttled. Yeah, okay. But all, all of a sudden, it's all I mean, I just, I listen, really, see, this, why would you? No, no, but you got to pick your position. No, 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 I, well, because. But I have a different question. Like anybody that brings question. up Hunter Biden's question. laptop, he's not an elected official. What do I care about him? I don't care. I'm not, I'm not talking about the relevance. I'm talking about evidence of throttling. Oh my God! Okay. That's ridiculous. That's yeah. ridiculous. No, no. Now you're now you're just giving me the anyway. No. But I'm not even going to. I don't. I'll accept all of it. Here's the issue. Yeah. I just want to make sure I understand your position. You're suggesting that basically it's in the social media kingpin's interests to yeah. create the perception 
Yeah. That there is throttling. Yes. And how is that to their advantage? Because it's the way they, the it's the way they maintain their, the, these are status hounds. These are freakazoids. These sociopaths. They, this is how they. So if I make you, if they make me believe there's throttling, then they position themselves as the great defender of humanity. Why does the rich, why do the richest people in the world have to chime in on every topic? It doesn't make any sense. There's no other reason for it other than, other than it's a drug. They can't get enough of it. Okay. It's a drug. I mean, why is that so hard to figure out? But no, what's interesting is your denial of the back channels of the U.S. intelligence agencies, State Department, Department of Homeland Security, White House, and their explicit conflict of interest, which very much incentivizes them to utilize their power to request information be removed. That is, that much is, as they, that is a. And you not, suggest that that's not happening, but I, I just, I'm not I, suggesting I, it, it's not happening. I'm, it's always happened in the history of, of in the history of this country from for they 200. They call William Randolph Hearst, and they're like, take that, don't for put that 200 in the years. It's been happening. It's just for some reason, all the conspiracy theorists are just eating it up right here, like there's something, like this is something new. It's not something new. It's what always happens. That's how you. That's, okay. Fair that's enough. how you run so a that, business. That, that, thank you. Okay, thank you. So therefore, America is dominated by propaganda because real information cannot prevail and never could prevail. No, whether it was not. First in the that is that is a ridiculous. You went from point A to point D, but skipped B and C. I no. win. Okay, I just well, I no. just won. Just so you understand what happened. No, because you just because you just agreed that throttling is is all this time. Whether it's William Randolph Hearst or the New York Times or Twitter, there's always been throttling. By definition, throttling is propaganda. I don't know if the term's throttling, but there's there there has you know everybody has always twisted information so that it fits their narrative, so that it fits their agenda. That's not something new. Yeah, and that's called propaganda. Well, it's also called politics, but in this country, yes, in this country, the system's bigger than that, so the system works. And the people that get buzzed or get caught in the process of trying to push that too far, they basically get ousted. They get they get called out by the system. Now, the reason, again, I think the main point here is the reason that tele Telegram is not in the U.S. and the reason that Musk and Zuckerberg are not in jail is because we have a system that actually works. And I can't stand the fact that people think, you know what, we're as bad as Russia, we're as bad as China. We're, we're not. We actually have a system that works. And it's, it's about time that people just kind of just backed off and said, hey, you know what, enough of this conspiracy bullshit. Our system works and we self-police it. And yeah, there's gonna be a few things that happen throughout time, binary events or things that slip through the cracks. But the reality is our stuff works. And for the most part, the majority of information is pretty good.